object mission is that we are sent on a scouting mission to Lordaeron to observe several, several, like, different things. What were the, what were the things, though? We have uh, got to look at the Zeppelin Tower self of Ville and find out what the comings and goings are. We need to go to Death Now and see how much recruiting they are doing with the Forsaken and what the troop movements are like. Then we need to go to the sewer entrance to the Undercity in Lordermere Lake, but only if we think it's safe enough and it's very dangerous, but they want us to scout out and see if it's possible to be an entrance for other more probably high level spies. <laughs> Not like level three scrubs. Mm hmm. But by the time we get there, we'll be like level five, so you know. You think there's gonna be stuff happening in our form? No, we'll go there at the end after we, you know, sniped snipe like a hundred. Oh, yeah, see, and see. also general operation, you know, optional bonus mission for XP, take out messengers. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's like a repeatable quest. But yeah, that's that's the plan, Chris. Okay. Good stuff. Unless I vote it down wrong, in which case, man, aliens will be mad. mad. Got that <laughs> you know, you can be pissed. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it all makes more sense to me now. I remember what goes on on this campaign. Hmm. <laughs> and so we ended with you guys having just boarded that. It was the evening. Um, it'll be the night tram. Um, you'll actually, I mean, it's not even that long to Ironforge, it's not like eight hours, so you'll probably arrive in like the wee hours of the morning okay. in Tinkertown. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so the tram is, uh, it doesn't in fact rattle along, it's all, it's all magnetic levitation because the gnomes are, you know, the gnomes and the Japanese, the only people who figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a very smooth ride. Um, the tram rapidly speeds up. You guys kind of feel the acceleration as you pin back, and it uh, uh, descends deep, deep, beyond, deep, deep, deep underground. The first sort of um, 15, 20 minutes of the journey are more or less a um, like 30 degree slope downwards uh, before it levels off and begins the long transit north to uh, Ironforge from Stormwind. Um, is anyone doing or saying anything specific? I'm, I'm going to rule that I'm looking tram, right isn't, right. tram is manifest in this world slightly differently from how it manifests in the game, which is more or less just like platforms that float along because like wind resistance and stuff that like that would sense, knock yeah. you off. So like they're, they're composed, uh, closed compartments with um, windows and like seats um, and hobos and hobos. <laughs> Yeah. Silas, throw some hobos over. Yeah, well, and we like have that with us, litter and stuff. Um, I'm trying to remember. So the exact plan was from Ironforge, we get a Griffin Airy Peak, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Cool. A Griffin? I'm, I'm, I have maps, right? Chris, I realize. I don't know, like, I've got a map. I'm sure they wouldn't send me on this without a map. Got a map, yeah? Yeah, you have you have maps. I'm I'm perusing my maps, and I'm like, you already oh, had maps. They didn't send you on this without yeah, maps because you already had them. Yeah, obviously, obviously. So I'm like, uh, basically, I'm like perusing, you know, writing little notes on the map, like highlighting stuff that says secret mission. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but, There's know, like a hobo watching like what you're writing in the reflection of the window. No, but I'm just, I'm just like looking it over and kind of like thinking about distances and like length of journey, you know, so I have estimated travel time. So I think kind of how many rations we need and stuff like that. I'm okay, sure. the, the... You're, you're plotting it all out. Okay. Yeah. Need to get some so like, when I get to MVP, you'll have a number to give me how many rations I want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, but Arabic isn't really a, a trade area, right? Like it doesn't. What, really like a city well, it's like it's like the main outpost of the Wild Hammer Dwarfs. Yeah, like they, they gotta okay, have like okay. you gotta be able to buy food. Like they they have one of those big, you know, you ever gone through in, in a quest like on a huge like standard layout dwarf halls, like killing all the dark iron dwarfs inside. It's got like multiple levels and like balconies that overlook the central area, which is always full of steam tanks. Like never have You've never you never cleared one of these out. They have one of those there. Mm -hmm. They're a complete fucking maze. Sometimes you have to go into the basement to kill a fire elemental. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoilers. spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that <laughs> say that and he remembers what it is. Oh, the questy experience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they have one of those there. So, like, and there's like a few other individual, like, dwarf bunker style buildings and stuff. So, it's, it's like, it's reasonable. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do a little chit chat. Definitely I'll, in there. I'll be, uh, I'll be like, I'll twitter and twitter and be like, uh, May I ask how much travel in the wilds have you done? Will you be able to uh, help me forage for food and scavenge? Will we need rations for the whole trip, or do you believe you will? I'm also just saying this quite, you know, quite early quietly. I kind of like just look over um, 
But Talia, I kind of look back. We're, we're night elves. Yes, we can. <laughs> Did you see this? Forge. I grew up in the forest of Ashen. Uh, I kind of shrug, like, uh huh. So but <laughs> it has been a while for me, at least. Especially in the enemy lands, I I will assist you, but I'm not sure how much aid I can get. I look at that survival skill, Chris, on that character. <laughs> What's it look like? <laughs> Let me look at myself, because uh, okay, I'm not okay, sure. Okay, okay, you can, you can roll okay. uh, an insight check. Insight check. DC, let's say, let's, um, let's say DC 15. That's for, the, that's for the difficulty. You roll DC 15 insight check, and if you, if you pass DC 15 insight, you know what their survival skills are. Oh, both of them? Okay. Can I do each of them individually? No. Shit. Ah! You, you you can know what their with a I ten you can know okay. yeah you can know if it's above a ten or not <laughs> You're sure no no not above a ten doesn't make any sense can I know <laughs> if it's like positive or negative can I know if it's like you know they're above average or below average sure <laughs> <laughs> does, any, does anybody have does anybody have nine or lower passive survival well ten or lower right is be, be, be above average or below average yeah yeah I've Above average. You have above Same. average. Oh, good. Oh, they're fine. They're fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right, excellent. Kind of like staring at his eleven. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I kind, of, I kind of, I kind of, you know, get out my shot. Above average. I'm like, okay, so I will, I will procure emergency rations, but not necessary for the entire trip. You know, just taking notes. I will say, so here's a, I'm not sure a about really the wildlife in Lord Run. Most things are, in fact, undead. Can you eat, eat undead first? I mean, like, <laughs> no, literally in the same way you can, yeah, in the same way you can eat, like, you know, meat that's been rotting for the last couple of years. But, like, there's, <laughs> they're not birds and stuff, and, like, Maybe they're all, they're undead. Yeah, but, like, you can't eat Oh, yeah, are they actually, are, are they all undead? I'm no, I, I, th I think, like, well, critters and stuff are all Spiders undead. and stuff around, right? Like, yeah, there's stuff, but, like, not that we would know about, I guess. <laughs> Sure, I mean, yeah, like, the nature of the wildlife, that's a pretty obscure, like, what is the wildlife like in but, uh, Fall Glades? Alright, like... Chris, do I know what, like, so it's basically all undead, what do you do undead eat? Do Forsaken eat food? No. I... Do they not? I thought they ate, but, like, They can, they, they they can they... like, cannibalize. Yeah, I thought that they can eat to, like, gain nutrients to, like, recover their strength and stuff, like, if they need to. I think, but, like, they don't strictly need to. I thought, what? Because like they, I remember there's like a, in Wrath of Lich King you find like the journal of an undead spy who's been like spying an alliance camp and he's been like hiding in a lake, breathing through it, or not even breathing through a straw, just hiding in a lake, spying through the surface of the water. That's right. And like it's like you know day five, the first breath is getting a bit stale now, <laughs> like, you know, oh, in the journal. So it's like I think they need to do the very slow metabolism. The, the, yeah, they they need to do the processes of life, but like at a dramatically reduced rate. So they probably so like need to eat a meal a month or something. Mm, okay, so we might have to take some rest. Just purely things. for like energy. But also, is the entirety of Lorda on like all undead? The continent? Like... Uh, the whole continent? Mm, not, no. Uh, but the area everything... around like Tristan, The Arathi Highlands and Hills, yeah. Brad Foothills, so southern Lorda on, are not, uh, like, are not strictly undead. Well, not like the Ultrak Mountains. Uh, the Alterac Mountains are neither, neither either, that's what Alterac Valley is. Uh, Arathi Highlands, Hillsbrad, and Alterac Mountains are more the site of, like, uh, cla the classic Alliance First Horde battlegrounds. So, like, uh, Hammerfall in Arathi Highlands is, a, is like, an Orc Horde outpost. Okay, so they, um, they eat all more food and stuff. Tower Mill is, like, a, an out outpost for all. Well, not all anymore, right? That's taken over by Undead. It's, uh, oh yeah, no, you're right. It is, and South Shore doesn't exist anymore either. Map slightly. When was this map? After the Great Cataclysm. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but yeah, there's nothing really uh, in in the Alterac Mountains themselves. There's not really faction representation. There are like ogre clans okay. and stuff, but so not you really. Really, you really go hunting there. Neither really. faction is really. There's not yet and shit. Mountain goats. I think anything south of the lake is. Anything yeah. the lake, but all the like Tiris Fall. Um, Tiris Fall, yeah, Tiris Fall is scourged. Uh, the mm -hmm. Plague Lands is obviously scourged. 
the I mean, Northern Plague Lands, Lands Quell, Quell Thalass is there. I'm not going up there, don't worry about that. Quell Thalass is the home of the Blood Elves, and like the Ghost Lands is also scourged, and <laughs> the Eversong Woods is not. Okay, yeah. we're not going up there. So, okay, we probably should get started on that. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty gnarly country you're traveling through. Mm. Okay, by the way, Josh, did you know mana potions are like 2,000 gold? Crazy. Or like, you know, 1,000 for minor mana potion, 2,000 for moderate, 4,000 for greater. Pretty well, a uh, great sword is we... like 2,000. <laughs> Magical great sword is worth like 2,000. Apparently, oh, yeah. Yeah, like, and yeah, like, you got to... By this stage of the game, there's a lot of fucking, like, price inflation. I'm just casually running around with hundreds of thousands. But also, like, how much is the health potion then? Uh, health potion... 50. Healing potion, 50. It's it's like literally. In what fucking world? I mean, um, you guys think like mana potion would be basically like, if you add a mana, you drink a mana potion. Basically, like this is a potion of fireball or something. Right? Okay, I'm just saying in the game, right? Because I've never played WoW, so this is for I guess two of you. Because I don't know. Yeah. Jack. Uh, how expensive is a mana potion compared to like, or how frequent do you see mana potions as a mana class versus a health potion? Oh, if I can use mana potions all the time, use mana potions. Also, oh, you use health potions. But he's a healer, so he yeah, dare nothing. No, he uses health potions. He uses soul stones. Well, not soul stones, health stones from locks. But like mana potions get because you wouldn't drink a health potion as a as a DPS. You use a DPS if you don't have... potion. Yeah, yeah, I guess. What if you were soloing? Yeah, and I mean maybe once. It, no, I, but that, that's I, I, you shouldn't like draw conclusions yeah, from that because it's just a balance. Yeah, that's that's nothing. It's not really related. But like yeah, the balance of this game. I think know, generally like, they're about the same price. The mana like it gives you like an extra I don't know X level spell, yeah. like third level spell or like, something. Yeah, like a mining is three D four mana, which is actually like a lot of mana, right? I mean, like three to twelve mana. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like when your cap is like eighteen, it's it's quite yeah, a lot. It's, it's like, or, like so twenty. Get, like, yeah, I mean, you how can much get like spell? You can get a, a ton of mana back. I how think it's a little bit decent. So spells for me right now are basically like five, unless it's a debilitate or other spell that where it costs me two instead. But like yeah. generally, a health potion will get us to full HP at these levels as well. But like spells. What are you, poor Jacko, what are you talking about? Who are like? You got so much health now. Like a healing potion is is, is like one d eight plus four. Like that's not going to get any yeah. of us. Oh out. really? They yeah. they changed it. It's not two d four plus yeah, two. It's one d eight plus four in this. No, but I can understand it was like five times as expensive, but it's like... Yeah, I think, I think it's quite expensive, but then I also think like... It's tough, right? But then when you get to high levels and mana points, even like... They're even cheaper, so then mm. if you just chug one of these, you can do like a lot of spells. I don't know. It's it's about... I don't know what the balance is like. In this yeah, game. I guess I don't want you just carrying like 10 mana potions. And yeah. Fucking... Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll get that. Basically, one. they're like, we know that mana's a thing, so we have to put it in the game. But we feel it breaks it, so we'll put it insanely yeah, right. expensive. Like man is always. So you're really high enough level bad. that it won't fucking. Yeah, matter. just like I mean, I get, I mean, it is the same thing. Regular five E, just like recovering spell points or like well, yeah. you know whatever or spell yeah. slots yeah. would just be so. Yeah, they make spells. Yeah, can you imagine like if they had potions of spell slots in like five E, it would be like. I don't know. I mean, they don't have potions, but you have like a I think nine the, stone the... or a pearl of power. Yeah. They, or, they yeah, they're all very expensive, right? Like, I mean, they're magical items. Yeah. And it's basically, it's like a refilling mana potion that refills once a day. Yeah. Crazy. So it yeah, makes sense it's, that it's more expensive. The problem expensive. with the mana potions is that, like, I guess you can carry on multiple of them and drink them all, right? That's the problem. Like, and, yeah, like, that's the, the limitation the Iron Stone yeah. doesn't have. And because you can do it immediately, right? Mm -hmm. So you could just, like, if you just if you were rich, you'd have, like, basically an unlimited mana. Unlimited power. So okay. that's how we did it. Okay. Anyway, anyway yeah. Okay, we're on the track. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm sorry. No. Okay. That's insane, though. Yeah. So it. you guys chat away the time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, while we're in Ironforge, excitedly show everyone, like as we're walking past the throne. Oh, look, that is the throne room. Ooh, the Ironforge action house. Ooh, the bank. You know? Okay, so, so Talia is, is planning, planning out the route. That she'll take you through once the tram, should the tram arrive. You, you know, you can't take these things for granted in a D&D campaign. In the... Uh, frozen for me. Might have this. No, Ian is also frozen for me. Hello. 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 He's back. Hello. He's Hello. Back. I'm back? Yeah. He's back. Hello. <laughs> He's back. All right, cool. The tram get there. Do we have a ticket we got, like, put in the machine at the other end? No, it's, it's free. That's why I was pissed. What? Why was free? Yeah. 
<laughs> they haven't figured out them. like how to abuse this. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll start thinking about this. Like, <laughs> this is a campaign to go how to monopolize the chances. <laughs> You can monopolize it if it's already free. Like you know, repeating. Tram oh, but it is mess. also the only tram in existence. So. Yeah, I'll do one that fits on the sheets because it fits on the sheets. Uh, excuse me, Jacko. Did we forget the tram from the central Ulduar to Menorom's? Uh... <laughs> yeah. Is that is, uh, technically? <laughs> All right, technically and we're in Ironforge. So there's a monorail, really. <laughs> Playing for half an hour, and now we're in Ironforge. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, uh, by the way, one, one quick clarification on mana potions: you can only use one per hour. Oh, okay. Pulls in to the yeah. deep run tram stop in Ironforge at platform one, so you don't have to run around platform two. Thank you. Uh, yes. You step off the tram. Mm. Is there is there like a, a guy with a stall with basically like <laughs> a brochure where of this is how you visit Ironforge? So you step out mm -hmm. of the deep run tram platform. Uh, Facing down the long uh, tunnel with the rotating cog walls uh, into Tinkertown. You're, you're now off the tram. Is this like a market? Uh, no, it's a it's like an underground station. The floor is um is it, like the floor and the walls are all iron. There's benches around. Yeah. Um, okay. and everything kind of has a sort of cobbled together feel to it. I'll right. turn to a Talia. Be like you. You uh, you worked at a merchant, yes. Do you know where the market in the city is? Yes, I've actually inquired it's quite a bit about Ironforge. It's, it's a very fascinating city for things. Excellent, lead the way. Right. <laughs> so I guess I would lead to the commons. Seems to be like more than sure. merchants. Sure, okay. So you guys um, leave, walk down this tunnel out of Tinkertown. Um, it's actually, apart from the, the hum of, of electricity and the whirring of machinery and gizmos, which is ever present, um, it's, uh, in terms of people, it's pretty quiet because it is the, the middle of the night. Um, you step out into Tinkertown proper, which is a wide open, um, uh, plaza with many, many and varied, um, shops and, and residences and things, uh, Giant pistons go up and down. Big cogwheels seem to whir around, coming out of the floor and going back in. The apparent purpose of uh, most of it is, is, is well, completely unapparent. Um, <laughs> but it is very impressive. And in the middle of all of Tinker Town, some, some distance away from you, you can see there's like this huge, um, uh, huge plateau of, of spinning cogs and whirring gears, atop which is a throne, which sits currently empty, but from where the, no, the king of the gnomes normally resides in sort of the com completely eye of the public, surveying his domain all around him, not away in a palace somewhere. Cool, cool. Um, braziers burn brightly, um, and other various sources of light mean that uh, night or day in Ironforge, it's always a... Not brightly lit, but certainly not, uh, not dim light. There's always like a, a, level, a fair level of light. They kind of permeate through the entire city, regardless of the time in the outside world. Excellent. So, Chris, like, uh, if you had to tell me the time by foot it would take to get from Airy Peak to the Undercity, how long would that be? Unless you uh, mean, like, just you changing the topic slightly. Funny, it looks very pretty, but we're on a mission here, Chris. Time. Um, from Airy Peak to the Undercity, um, like. Down through Chillwind Pass and then like along west towards the Undercity, that route. Yeah, like, but, but I have no idea of scale on this map, so I have no idea. Like, um, like that, like two weeks travel or like two months? Like, that's why I'm no, uh, like, yeah, a week, a week, a week to two weeks, depending on how uh, oh, okay. good progress you make. Okay, and if you get mounts, or... <laughs> if you get mounts, well, what, what level do you think you are? <laughs> Oh, can we get mine to level four? <laughs> Do you want to show third chopper, Jacko? Do you want an heirloom mount? Alright. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's about. So a couple of weeks I'll be safe, and then a couple of weeks back. We're going to be waiting around. So while, so while he's obviously calculating on his map, I'm yeah. like, so you... this is Tinker Town, uh, this is where the gnomes went to uh -huh. after their original uh -huh. city was mm. destroyed, or they yes, had to yes. flee out because of. It, it's. 
plague or something. I don't very know. impressive, very impressive. Okay, uh, like, okay, I believe perhaps we should to be safe and not know exactly what the hunting ground would be like. I would say kinda how fashions would be smaller, you fill on backpack. Perhaps twenty rations each. Twenty days worth, obviously. Where are we going to be carrying that? Your backpack. The rations weigh the same in WoW as they do in 5e. So that's yeah. like 20 of that's, that's 40 pounds. 40, 40 pounds. 20 kilos, yeah. What are you talking about? 20 kilos, nothing. It's well, like, it's pounds, like... 40 pounds of extra weight, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> you know, remember, we were fucking in order to take nothing. Yeah, but even then, I don't think 20 days is that much. Right? Yeah, right? I was being pretty conservative. No, they're, they're, at least in 5e, they're 5 silver and 2 pounds a piece. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I mean, like, the weight is obviously going to be a problem, but even but 20 days like, worth of real food is... Over, you know, in, 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 like, Tears Fall Glades, where we don't know our food situation, and we don't know how long we're going to be there. Yeah, like, I was considering saying, like, 30 each, but I thought, like, I might not better carry that much. Maybe if we get a mule. Yeah, I was considering this, but I... Well, you can get more than 20 meals, but then it becomes a separate stack. <laughs> okay, so... We always, I was, I, was I mean, I'll, I'll discuss with you. You know, basically, it's like so. As for the food situation, I believe minimum to be safe, twenty days worth each would be preferable. But obviously, I do not know. Uh, quite frankly, how hardy night elves are, whether or not you would be comfortable carrying that much weight over an extended journey. We uh, could consider what is the the rule here, Chris, on uh, encumberment. I'm not gonna start writing down weights on my character. Um, my yeah, character. no, no. Like, I mean, no. We'll go with. Well, you're not encumbered until like you reach it's Skyrim style. You're not encumbered until you reach like max carrying capacity, and then and then you can't. What's uh, let's figure out but, my max. Go to the like because there's optional rules for like stages of encumberment. Let me get the DMG out real quick. Yeah. Well, I just don't know how to figure out what my max is then. And then I have to figure out all the stuff I carry, how my shadow weighs. No. Yeah, that's why I made a character sheet for inventory that has weight and the amount of items, so I can figure that out. Sure, be. Um. All right. So if if we level, I'm gonna be able to carry a lot more. That's unimportant. Because you're gonna happen. use two strength to go to twenty. No, I'm only at seventeen right now. Oh, okay. So I'll do one more and get eighteen, and then. But like, will a mule really like survive like the journey like that? Like, if it had like, feed, yes. They had to like they had to, they had to like get rid of Bill pretty early on in the Lord of Rings. Like generally, that was because of a mine. Though. I think yeah, they were but we might have to go for a mine. Who knows? You know? Who knows? I know. <laughs> Who, no you mines. Don't know, Jacob. That's the rule. Um, I mean, once we get to also, it's a lot easier to hide like us feed and also yeah, that's true. Like it's, just, it's, just a, it's just an extra like, thing to worry about giving away our position. I look over at Talia. She's a big, strong girl. I'm sure I have, I have like, really about a hundred pounds left. Why? You got carry 15 yeah. rations you by yourself? <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, while we all discuss how much you can carry, because we're walking towards the fashion <laughs> fashion months. seller. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um... So you guys progress out of Tinker Town and into the wide, echoing cavern um, that makes up the huge uh, loop around that is Ironforge proper. Um, you are now in the military quarter, or the military ward. Um, and uh, as you enter it and see the various um, uh, barracks, uh, armorsmiths, uh, shops, even inns and so on around. Yeah. Um, you see a, uh, or you spot a battalion of dwarven soldiers, uh, each dressed in so much plate mail that they make Talia look like uh, she's wearing lingerie. Um, <laughs> nice. But I do have plate mail myself. Yeah, <laughs> yes, and and yet, okay. and yet, the dwarves, the, 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 you know, you know how the dwarves like to compensate. Yes, it's like they're wearing plate mail on their plate mail. Um, uh, mar marshalling up, 
um, possibly up to like a like several, like a few hundred dwarves, like three or four hundred dwarves, all okay. line, like formed up in rows. Um, and then at a command, they turn and begin marching with a clattering and a clanking of so much plate mail that really echoes throughout the entire military ward, uh, to like uh, around and along through the city towards the commons. Um, you guys continue through the military ward, past the um, training dummies, I suppose, and the various. Obviously, <laughs> once once we get like um, uh, to that to that hallway into the great forge, I kind of like peek to see if we can see it or not, like the big lava spray and everything. Uh, no, the angle doesn't doesn't quite work out. You sort of twist and turns away. Yeah, so I I, I, I turn to uh, Silas. I'm sorry, but could we make a quick detour to the center of city? It is, from what I, from everything I've ever heard, quite magnificent. You've never seen it. Never been here, no. Kind of shrug is like, what was it? It takes you a long time. But in fact, the center is quite well connected to the rest of the city, I believe. I just, you know, motion a few minutes into it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we go. Okay, you guys turn down the uh, the enormous um, side corridor lined with lined high up all up the walls with houses and shops and uh, various um, various buildings that the dwarves have made efficient use of space of to stack high in their in their compact city. Um, you wa you walk down the wide street again, almost devoid of um, uh, of other pedestrians or even vehicles. Um, before turning a corner and being faced with the enormous uh, magnitude of the the Great Forge of Central Iron uh, Central Iron Forge, uh, a chamber possibly even as much as half a mile high, um, with const thick constant streams of uh, lava and molten iron pouring down from various holes in the ceiling or uh, dangling receptacles. Uh, huge like buckets the size of houses on long chains are uh, carried around transporting um, molten iron or even finished goods from one point to another uh, in the very center bellows the size of like a, a small castle um, oscillate up and down enormous uh, like adamantine wheels turn uh, churning the uh, lava of the, of the pit below and all around the edge are various uh, uh, trade offices, physicians, uh, iron, uh, ironware shops, an arcanery, an inn, a guild of miners very prominently sitting there, a uh, supply store, even a clothier leather. It's, it's the real, it's the real um, mercantile hub of the, of the city. Or mercantile hub, but um, goods hub in terms of uh, like things that are made. It all seems to be here. Um, mm. On your left, as you look out across this vast open space, the far side of which is all, is shrouded almost in the um, in the smoke and haze from uh, a thousand different projects of metallurgy, kicking up sparks and smoke. Um, on the left is the uh, the high seat or the grand hall containing the high seat of the dwarven triumvirate. Um, heavily guarded, of course. And yes, you sort of stand there looking out across this uh, wide expanse. Do we see the, the Griffin Master as well? Um, yes, you do. In fact, you spot him by, even at this hour of the night, while there aren't many people about, Iron Forge never closes, and there is, in fact, something of a crowd gathered around where you know the Griffin Master to be. Mm. Yeah. Really special. <laughs> yeah, don't sound We could, in fact, arrange our, our trip. Ah, seems sensible while we're here. I must say, uh, considering as your, what was your suggestion to come see this, I kind of look at a quite more impressive display, but maybe I've, you know, misunderstood my earth, which I thought you were quite, more, uh, this wasn't really a cup of tea. Oh well, no, not generally, and I don't believe I would wish to live here, but 
quite magnificent uh, the the difference in culture really uh, and... as Ta as talia says this like a um a steam a steam engine that's driving some enormous wheel uh whistles through through its pipe making a loud a, a noise shrill and somewhat louder than a jumbo jet taking off <laughs> it is peaceful yes <laughs> I didn't. Did I, mean, I, did I say peaceful? Or is that magnificent? No, I know. I, know. <laughs> I say, but I do admire the dwarves for their ambition. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I think it is quite a display of what they can accomplish. It is until they dig too deep too quickly and unleash a battle rock. Mm. No but, such uh, thing in this universe. Wait, this. would I have seen the Griffin Master? Like, I, I don't know if I would have known like where to look for anything. Um, yeah. Probably see the Griffins around. Sure. But you're right uh, yeah. over here. Or if someone's shrouded by like the crowd of you know like fifty or sixty people around him. Yeah. Let us go see if we can arrange our transport and perhaps. Uh, it's it's your understanding, Silas, that your your transport has already been yeah, but like, arranged. I see yeah, I need a little bit of warning, right? They can't yeah. be like, hey, we're here, where's our Griffin? You know, we'll let them know we're doing a bit of shopping, yeah. but then, like, you know. As we're yeah, yeah. see what exactly is all the hubbub. <laughs> and yeah, I guess we uh, walk on up to the Griffin Master. Okay. Yeah. You so you walk on over um, to where the Griffin Master um, is having a heated debate with another dwarf. Um, the whole crowd seems um, rather riled by something, or at least impatient. Uh, and you get there just as the Griffin Master saying, "I told you, it's uh, it's our no fly zone outside the city tonight. No civilian transport, military only. Come back in the morning, all of you." And as merchants, and you know, you know, I've got, I've got little eggs. I need to get to, you know, I can tell some are and so on and so forth. There's a, there's a, a groan goes up in the crowd, and everyone's complaining, and there's generally an argument going on. Mm -hmm. I can okay. just wait until people seem like they're out, or if they don't, I'll just like wait for them. They don't seem to be clearing out in a in a hurry. Although, like the the crowd is not densely packed, as most people standing around and complaining. You could sort of push your way to the front if you wanted. No one's actually talking. It'd be someone still arguing with the actual. Man. Oh yeah, yeah, no, the the yeah, it's mostly people. It's it's the the argument goes on for some time and seems to have been going on for some time before you got here. The people are complaining, you know, that um, um, oh, you know, why is it that every other fucking day, you know, there's there's no civilian flights and you know I've got yeah. these goods that need to get out and what are you gonna do about it? Who's Gonna pay, he's gonna reimburse my losses, and the guy's saying, You know, it's not my fucking problem, I don't make the yeah, rules. Yeah. This is, yes, yeah, it's, it's going back and forth. It well as it said that, um, uh, someone who uh, wishes to debate with a dwarf should have brought along a, uh, a meal and a book to pass the time, for they have the patience of the stone, cool. or in this case, the iron. I don't, I don't mind shouldering through the crowd. No, no, no. Before you do that, I'll be. I'll say like, uh, Tally, are we? I can't even say quiet. I, I see you kind of, you know, getting ready. You're, you know, <laughs> getting the shoulder ready. <laughs> like, like, uh, uh, it, would not, it would be less shouldering and more hipping. <laughs> yeah, I'd say all um, about half your height. Tally, just perhaps. basically the equivalent, like your hip, their shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Tally, perhaps it is best not to uh, get too much attention to us for you. We don't look like a normal military type. Would you and Shalan perhaps could pick up the rations while I talk to the gentleman here. And I give you a uh, 50 gold. Alright. Thank you. I, uh, wish in, wish along, yeah? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's go. <clears throat> okay, so let's, you guys head off to, to uh, the commons. Yeah, Apparently. I mean, yeah. Sure. I'm just okay. following Talia you like a lost child right now. Okay. Yeah, as um, as I, uh, I take her like on the shoulder, I say it's it is quite different from Darnassus, isn't it? Um, it yes, is not the more opposite city imagined Darnassus than Iron yeah. Forge. Like you know, well, all like, Grimmar is supposed to. Darnassus has gone for a while, and she's sort of gotten accustomed to you know certain mostly human cities and a couple others. Like this is just completely yeah. foreign to her. No, it is it is a city built inside of a mountain. There is you know. A hammering and a, a churning and an arguing going on at all times. Lava is literally flowing from the ceiling quite alarmingly, although no one seems to be as. You know, I guess if you live around all day, it's, it's not quite so nerve wracking as you know. You just sort of walk, you just walk past it. Um, but the two of you, with Shalan giving a sort of 
hesitant glance around every so often, make your way off towards the commons. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, Silas, let's deal with you first. While that's happening, I'm going to grab a drink then. Sure. Okay. So I'll wait uh, perhaps two minutes until I think uh, the girls are both, like, you know, decently out of sight. The girls? What do you want me to call you? The women? Yeah. Sure. I, uh, sure. And then and I'll them my way through the crowd as well. Okay. Yep. So you sort of you push through to the front. Um, and just, so just as you get there, the current argument is um, cut off by a long, a shrill whine from one of the uh, steam stacks nearby, um, which quite ruins the points that the rotund trader was trying to make to the Griffin Master. And he sort of folds his arms and goes off in a huff, leaving a, a slight lull on the conversation for you to insert yourself into. Yeah. So, you know, try to get quite close. I'm not like, you know, yeah. speaking loud enough, I've got over here, like I assume the motions were doing. As you come closer, he says in a louder voice than you wanted with your um, subtle intentions in mind, he says, ah, what do you want, human? Well, excuse me, sir, but I believe... Well, you are in human form, by the way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. I'm like, uh, well, excuse me, sir, but I believe we uh, need your services. Uh, kind of... Oh, yeah, you and half the other bloody population of the city. 